when you think about it for you, you're saying, look, if I could go back in time, I would have just moved my body. I would have gotten up. I would have uh, gotten out in the world. I would have uh, breathed some fresh air, um, gotten outside, seen the blue sky or the raindrops. I think mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what the weather is. Just get outside. And, and look, there's a lot of scientists that tell you that's a great place to start for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter if you are mildly depressed, anxious, um, or in some serious capacity for, from a depression standpoint. So it, it all works the right way. Mm -hmm. So let's just say somebody's moving forward. How do you, how do you make sure that, gosh, you don't slip backwards? I feel like that's, that's something I'd be thinking about is, okay, I've made some progress. How do I make sure I don't go back to that room, back to that bed and knock it up? Yeah. So a big thing I like to talk about is exactly what I just mentioned about the individual puzzle pieces that create the negative picture, but in the exact opposite way. So what I like to call it, I like to call it a playbook or a toolbox. Every single thing that helped me overcome my own depression and suicidal ideation is an individual puzzle piece or individual play from a playbook or individual tool from my toolbox. So it's not just one thing that helped me. It was a combination of things that helped me. So one thing that I know I personally do and that helps me and my clients is we use these tools, these toolbox, we use these plays from a playbook, right? I'm not saying that you're never going to feel depressed again or sad or anxious, fearful, whatever again. Of course, we're going to feel these things. It's, it's only human. It's natural and it's normal. But it's how long do we stay there? And with these tools, these strategies, you know, moving your body, your focus, your thought patterns, your language that you use, your environment that you're in, your physical fitness, nutrition, so many things come into play. So it's how can I pull a certain play out of my playbook to use in this given circumstance to, okay, help me from the situation I'm in so that way it doesn't keep me in the bed on the couch 24-7 like it used to. Now I'm equipped. And that's what I personally use. Nice. So when you think about uh, if you sort of set depression aside and, and this kind of big heavy topic aside for just a second and you think about the general population, mm -hmm. I mean, how are you helping regular folks uh, you know, in the world today um, that, that just need to be supported? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm trying to do anything I can. I do my keynotes content on social media, you know, my whole philosophy is I want to speak to many, you know, of course I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with my clients and whatnot, but how I'm helping people is through my content, through my keynotes. Eventually if they do become a client, that's how I help. But honestly, it's just any person I come in contact with, I want to serve. I want to help. I want to offer up something value because something I've realized, especially in entrepreneurship, and I think just in life in general, it's not what you can get from somebody else, but it's what you can give. And then when you start giving from a heart centered place, that's where like the law of reciprocity comes into play. And that's where you get served for yourself. So how I'm serving everyone, the average Joe is I'll just have a conversation with someone. If I see someone's down, obviously I want to help them. Even if they're not going through something like that, where it's mental, something that I can actually see. Like I remember there's this one story where, I was heading up to New Jersey to visit my, my grandmother and grandfather for like Thanksgiving or something like that. And we were at a gas station and I can actually see this person, this guy, he, he, he's at a gas, he's legit pushing his car to the gas pump, but he can't do it. And, um, I didn't see this at first, but he was like walking back and forth with like cups, actual like big gulps, cups of gasoline to put in his car, but it wasn't working and he needed help to go to the pump. And I saw him. So I dropped everything. My family's like, where are you going? I was like, come with me. And my brothers came with me. We just helped the guy to the pump to fill up. Like it was something so simple, you know? So my whole philosophy is if I see somebody in distress, like why can't I help them? You know, like I'm, I'm here. I got two arms, two legs. Like why not? So any way, shape or form that I can serve, I want to take advantage of that opportunity, whether it's just having a conversation with somebody, if I see their actually down like i can get a sense of their energy or if i see they need a hand to get their car to the gas pump or they may not have money to buy groceries and someone's car got declined in the grocery store like something like that 
if I see an opportunity to help, I want to help. I want to serve.